Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm back with the third video in the Three Rivers Challenge for 2023. If you're new here, this is the pantry challenge that I do every year, both here on YouTube and on Instagram, and I host it using the hashtag Three Rivers Challenge. If you check out that hashtag, you can find all of the other amazing channels here on YouTube. Or if you check it out on Instagram, you can find lots of amazing pages of people who are participating. Um, just so many great ideas. There are videos that show you how to inventory your pantries and freezers, how to um, rotate through stock, how to find wonderful recipes to use up some of your common canned goods that are sitting on your shelves that you just kind of don't know what to do with. Just lots of really valuable information in this community. I enjoy going through the hashtag and um, watching videos and checking out posts, and so I hope that you will do that. For my video this week, I'm going to show you my meals once again, but I organize it a little differently than I have the last couple weeks. Instead of showing you each day breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm going to show you all the breakfasts that I made this week that are new and aren't repeats from um, previous week's video. Then I'm going to show you all the lunches. And then I'll show you all the dinners. And I did that. It's just an easier way for me to organize it at this point in the challenge because we are getting into lots of duplicate meals from um, like the first week of the challenge because I have children who like a lot of the same things for lunches and stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started and let me show you what we had for breakfast this week. Before we're able to cook our meals every week, we have to do a little bit of food prep. And so every Sunday I need to grind my grains for the week's meals. I'm getting out some wheat berries here from our pantry. I also grabbed some oat groats. Oat groats, this is what oats look like when they come straight off of the plant. They look a lot like a wheat berry. And then typically for breakfast, they're rolled out and flattened. And that's what you eat when you eat oatmeal but you can grind down these oat groats and turn them into oat flour. These are those wheat berries. These are soft white wheat berries. These are ideal for baking things like muffins and pancakes. They're not ideal for bread. And then I have some whole blue corn and I'm trying to use these up. That's kind of the goal of the pantry challenge is to use up a lot of my grains before they go bad. We need to cycle through those so that um, they don't go rancid in storage. So just running these through my mill, I do have a Nutri-Mill, I discussed it in last week's video. And when we're done milling our flowers, we just put them in jars. It is best to eat your freshly ground grains immediately after grinding, but um, that is an inconvenient for a really busy mother. So I do the, a lot of it at once, and then I store them in the fridge to retain more of the nutrients of those grains. So we're all set for the week. and Let's make our first breakfast. We're gonna make some blueberry muffins on this day. I'm not gonna be using my fresh ground grains on this day, but we're all ready for when we want to. We're gonna use regular flour. I've got all of my dry ingredients here ready to go. And on this day, I'm not really feeling like making muffins. That's a little more work to clean out a muffin tin, and we are out of paper plates now after having the baby and back to doing dishes by hand. So I grabbed some eggs here, and you can see that my leghorns are now laying white eggs. We haven't had white eggs for over a month and a half, so this is a sign that spring is around the corner. The days are getting longer. We are starting to get eggs from our hens. Their break is over, and that's very exciting. So anyways, as I was saying, I don't want to use a muffin tin. They're hard to clean. What I like to do is pour my muffin batter into pie pans like this. I just grease them up really well, and I can fit about a dozen muffins per pie pan. And I just pour it out like this. Baking times are pretty much the same, uh, maybe at about 10 minutes, depending on how deep your dish is. And so on this day, while they were baking or just going out and seeing what the rest of the family is, this ended up being a holiday where the university was closed and Adam was home. So we had lots of extra time to snuggle and be together as a family, which is always wonderful. And then there they go. Our muffin pies are out of the oven. We used frozen blueberries from storage that we preserved last summer, and this turned out delicious. Like I said, this saves me a lot of time having to clean muffin tins. It's just a lot easier to wipe out a muffin pan. If you've ever cleaned a muffin tin, you know what I'm talking about. And then all you have to do 
is cut a little slice and you have your little muffin pie. <laughs> so um, as I said, you're just going to adjust your baking time for maybe an extra five to 10 minutes and it will all turn out just fine. So there's a little hack for you mothers who want to save yourself some time hand washing dishes. Just go ahead and use a pie plate. All right, now we are going to start using up some of those grains. We have some of that blue corn flour that we ground. We also have the oat flour and we are going to make Johnny cakes. Johnny cakes are pancakes that are made with corn flour. I'm using my regular pancake recipe here and I am going to use some water glassed eggs. These are eggs that we preserved last uh, spring and I have videos all about that process if you want to learn more about it. Now when you use fresh ground flowers, sometimes they don't absorb nutrient or absorb liquids right away. You have to let them sit and it'll get thicker as it sits and that was the case here. We ended up using three fourths of the flour, blue corn flour, and we did one fourth of the recipe's flour with oat flour and we ended up with these beautiful Johnny cakes, a lovely blue color which is always fun. And the kids just eat them like regular pancakes. On this day we're having maple syrup with them. We're going to have to start rationing maple syrup soon. We're going to run out of that. <laughs> but we can always tap our own maple trees here in the coming months, um, Lord willing, and we can make some of our own maple syrup if we run out. So I like to just switch up which grains we're making pancakes from every week. Some weeks it's buck buckwheat, some weeks we use Johnny Cakes, and some weeks we just do regular um, wheat flour pancakes. But it's always a hit. My kids... Um, we'll do either pancakes or waffles in some form every week, and then we'll vary what types of syrups we use with them. So it's a, a labor of love flipping pancakes for a group of children this, <laughs> this big. I ended up for a little over an hour standing there um, flipping them on this day, and it's fine. The baby was content, and everybody got uh, a plate of hot pancakes as they woke up or came in from chores. Everybody's happy. Next breakfast, we're going to do chia pudding. So the night before, I take two tablespoons of chia seeds and put them in each of my half pint jars here. The reason you need to do this the night before is that these chia seeds are going to kind of bloom. They're going to give off a gelatinous seed coating that is really tasty and good for you. So we fill with, we're using um, almond milk, you could use any kind of milk, and then we're just going to put a little bit of maple syrup in each jar. You could use honey, you could use sugar, you could use fruit, however you would want to sweeten it a little bit. And then this will just sit in the fridge overnight. We kind of stirred it around, and then in the morning when we wake up, that seed will have released that gelatinous coating and it makes it like a pudding texture. So I'll show you that here in a minute. We're going to serve this with, these are some leftover biscuits. I'll show you one of the dinners we made this week. These were la rustic lard biscuits that I made, and we had some leftover. So I grabbed some various jams and jellies. We have blueberry jam, tomato jam, and I believe pear butter here that the kids will eat with their biscuits. And then here is that chia pudding. So as you can see, those little chia seeds kind of bloomed, and it's much thicker the kids love this. We call it a, a pudding, and it's always a hit. So I need to remember to keep jars of this for snacks in the fridge more often. Um, we also just grabbed a couple jars of canned fruit, pears and peaches, and this is what we're having for breakfast on this morning. As I mentioned, we're all out of paper plates. I had paper plates gifted to me after I had the baby and it was such a blessing, but now we are back to using regular dishes and I'm getting back into a rhythm of <laughs> getting dishes done. As you guys know, we don't have a functioning dishwasher here with our hard water. We have a hard time keeping dishwashers functioning, so that's okay. We're back to using the regular dishes and it's much better for the environment anyways, so happy to to do that all right let's focus on another breakfast we had this week once again we soaked our oats overnight this is the best thing you can do to make them better for digestion and for nutrient absorption so we drain we're going to drain the water out of that we're also going to serve it with some freeze-dried scrambled eggs from last spring these were just run through the freeze dryer and powdered up we're going to eat them with our oats today 
got, as always, little Miss Hannah on the counter helping me. <laughs> we make oatmeal differently every time we make it. On this day, I'm making like an apple pie oatmeal. I have some of our storage apples that are in our overflow fridge in the garage. We're just going to chop them up. I chop them into little tiny pieces. I'm going to kind of show you the size there. When I make my um, oatmeal with apples, this is the size that I like them to be so that they'll cook up and soften very quickly. We're just gonna stir that around. We're gonna add a little bit of sweetener and then we will add our spices. You can use nutmeg. We like to use cinnamon. We're getting a little low on cinnamon in this jar, but thankfully I have another bag of cinnamon in the freezer that I'll pull out and thaw and refill this jar. And then we need to get our eggs rehydrated. So I don't have a specific formula for how I rehydrate foods. I just kind of go by um, how it feels or how it looks. So what I'm doing is kind of crumbling up the chunks first, and then we're going to slowly add water until we get it to the consistency that I desire my scrambled eggs to be at. Remember, it does take a little bit of time. You need to let it sit there for a second to, to absorb the water. And then um, with these scrambled eggs, we are going to run these through the blender to get any of those freeze-dried chunks kind of um, pulverized down. <laughs> and then we're going to add some um, bacon grease to our cast iron pan here. I like to cook eggs in bacon grease. gives it great flavor. We're going to add those freeze-dried rehydrated eggs to the hot pan. And then we're just going to scramble this up. And it tastes just like fresh scrambled eggs and it's a great way to use those eggs that you preserved and that is what we wanted this morning for breakfast we're kind of missing having scrambled eggs during the great <laughs> um, egg laying break that our hens are taking but shortly in just a little while we'll be swimming in eggs lord willing once the hens pick back up and they're laying there is our apple pie oatmeal that we've got and everybody's just going to fill their bowl as they desire with eggs and oatmeal. Get these bellies nice and full to start our homeschool day. So oatmeal is another one of those breakfasts with a large family that we tend to eat about once a week. It's a really easy one. It cooks up quickly and it is a nice cheap option. All right, let's look at the lunches that we made this week. So before I went to bed, I got my split peas and lentils soaking. I don't measure. I just kind of know the amount that um, will feed my family a lunch. And I just kind of mix together split peas. And if I have lentils in storage, I'll add those. You don't have to. You could just use split peas. And we soak them overnight. And that makes them cook a little faster the next day. On this day, we're going to a homeschool co-op. So we need to get this going in the morning in the crock pot so it'll be ready when we get home. We're gonna add a few ingredients here. I have some bay leaves. I have some parsley. This is a French onion soup base. It's just beef broth with some onions. And then we have some homegrown garlic. And we're gonna add this all to the crock pot. I make split pea soup differently every time I make it just because I tend to add whatever I have in the fridge. On this day, I didn't have any roast drippings that needed used up. So we're just gonna add another quart of beef broth here so that there's enough liquid in the crock pot for it to cook. Salt and pepper it really well, and then we'll just have this on high all morning while we are hanging out with our homeschool friends and doing our co-op activities. And then when we got home, we just need to stir it for a little bit. Um, those split peas are softened, but because it hasn't been being stirred, they um, are still kind of looking like they're in a solid form. Then I'm gonna add some leftover mashed potatoes that we had in the fridge from a dinner and that will just kind of help thicken this up and get them used up. And there we go, a lovely warm split pea soup that was done and took very little effort to cook while we were able to hang out with our friends all morning. So that is a blessing. Surprisingly, split pea soup is one of my children's absolute favorite lunches. They ask for this all the time. So I buy split peas in 50 pound quantities <laughs> to keep them in the house so that we always have it. And I love making soup on days even when we're not leaving the house because we can work on school and um, that's what we're doing most days. And then the soup will be done by the time uh, we finish with our school. On this day, I had these breads that my husband had bought for a special meal over our 
a winter break and we never ended up using them. And I don't typically buy this. This was a special pur purchase. So I thought, hey, we'll just turn these into pizzas on this day instead of having to make our own pizza crust. I pulled out some tomato paste that we made last summer and it's been thawing and is now frozen. We're gonna turn this into our pizza sauce by adding some olive oil, oregano, garlic powder, and salt. That's how I make my tomato paste and we just kind of mix that together and we'll spread that over our uh, bread crust here. This is what that looked like once it was all ready and then all I'm going to do now is focus on my toppings. So I took a pound of pork sausage. It's just a salt and pepper pork sausage that we had in the freezer and I browned that up to add to each of the pizzas. And then I cut up a couple different toppings that the children can select from. We have some black olives here that I sliced up. We have anchovies, and these are just various pickled vegetables, uh, garlic scapes, pickled cucumbers. There's some pickled peppers, garlic, um, all sorts of things down there. And so the kids can make their own pizzas. This is what they usually look like. And then with this particular bread, all I had to do was put it in the oven for about five minutes and it was ready to go. And then with it, we have some sliced pickles, we have some storage apples, and then some canned peaches. I always save the liquid from my canned fruit. This juice will be used to make jello later on. Here's some leftover chili mac from another lunch that we made, and this is what we are having on this day. The children can just kind of pick and choose and make their own little plate here. I know our pizzas don't look as tasty without cheese, and we do really wish that we could have cheese, but as you guys know, we're dealing with an anaphylactic dairy allergy, and that is why we eat our pizza without cheese on it. Cooking without dairy can definitely be a challenge, but we've just learned to adapt and eat our, our foods without the usual butter and cheese, and it's just what we're used to. Okay, here's another lunch. I think I kind of showed you the leftover in the last clip. They're out of order, but I have a quart of my chili base. I've shown you this in another video and shown you how we make actual chili out of it, but this is a really easy way to use it up. We're gonna make chili mac. So I buy these rice noodles in bulk from Azure Standard. These are Tinkyata brand rice macaroni noodles. And we're just gonna boil these up and add our chili base with a little bit of tomato paste. It's a super simple convenience meal on a really busy day when you kind of get behind in your schoolwork and you need to <laughs> hurry up and get something uh, hot ready for lunch. So there's our tomato paste. We're adding our chili base to our cooked noodles and all we have to do is stir it up and maybe add a little bit of salt and it is ready to go, ready to fill bowls. So. This is like the equivalent of a homesteader's spaghetti-o lunch. <laughs> We're, here's some homemade um, Tabasco sauce from the Tabasco peppers that we grew last year. Children will add that to bowls to add a little extra spice, the older ones. We also will add nutritional yeast if we want some cheese flavor. And this is what everybody will eat. Like I said, um, when you homestead, there are some things that are convenience meals, and this is definitely one of them. And we love that. Okay, we have a bag of frozen tomatoes from last year's garden just sitting in the freezer, and I've decided that today is the day that we're going to use them up. So I've shown you this before in other videos, but all you have to do with frozen tomatoes is run them under warm water, and those peels just slip right off. And then I'll kind of take my finger and I'll dig the core out on the top of these, and then they're ready to just be cooked down. Um, since we are going to end up blending these, I don't technically need to remove the skins, but we went ahead and did that and fed the skins to the chickens. We've got all of these tomatoes in a pot, and then I'm going to add a quart of my French onion base that I've shown you in other videos. It's just uh, beef broth with some onions that I can together. It makes a great soup base, a lot of really concentrated onion flavor. And so we're going to pour that in with our tomatoes, get that simmering. Like I said earlier, soup is just a really convenient meal to make uh, for lunches because this can simmer all day while we're doing school. And so that's what happened um, when we got done doing our schoolwork. I was able to grab my immersion blender and kind of blend all of those onions and tomatoes up into a smoother puree. And then this is going to be the base for a soup that we're going to make today. Just kind of use up some leftovers that we have in the fridge 
and use up some freeze dried veggies that are sitting on the pantry shelves. So now that that's blended, I have a little bit of leftover white chicken chili that is in the fridge. I'll show you this recipe later on in our dinner section. And I'm just gonna toss that in. That's gonna give us some beans and some protein. And then I'm gonna add some extra veggies. We have some freeze dried sweet corn. This will rehydrate as it sits and simmers in the broth. We're also gonna add some freeze dried okra. I love okra in soup. It's just so pretty. They look like little flowers in there. We're gonna stir that around. And then as we are, we are finishing up just a few other school tasks that need to get done on this homeschool day. So I have the pot just sitting on our wood stove here out in the family room while those vegetables rehydrate and the wood stove will keep it warm. And then we can finish up all of our learning and all of our fun tasks that we're doing on this morning and lunch will be ready for us as soon as we're done. This is what most days look like for us. Baby's been sleeping through school, which is a huge blessing. The big kids, um, the big boys like to be upstairs doing their schoolwork at their desks. The girls and Levi hang out with me downstairs so that I can answer more of their questions. And then the little boys end up playing in the family room, um, kind of within an earshot so I can keep an eye on them. They are typically the most work out of anyone. <laughs> My four-year-old and two-year-old, I often have to tell them to quiet down so that we can uh, do our schoolwork, but... It works out really well for us. So this is what that soup looked like. We're all done with school and it's time to eat. Just uh, a nice warm meal on this day. These cold Ohio um, days, there's nothing like soup to fill your belly and warm you up. Now let's talk about dinner. Okay, on this day we're making some mashed potatoes and we've got some pork chops. We have um, them searing in a little bit of home rendered lard here in the cast iron pan. I just sear them for a couple minutes on each side, and then we are gonna transfer them to the oven to finish cooking. So um, a friend raises our pork for us, and we purchase three hogs from him every year, and that's what feeds our family. I have this Montreal steak seasoning. This is my favorite seasoning to use for steaks and pork chops, and we're just gonna sprinkle that over the top of the seared chops before they go into the oven. And then we're going to put them in the oven on about 400 degrees for, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes. And then we're going to put the broiler on to kind of crisp them up and finish it off for maybe another couple minutes. And this is what those pork chops look like. With it, I'm going to do a couple pints of my home canned green beans here. And then to sop up some of that green bean broth, we're going to add a little bit of freeze dried sweet corn that will rehydrate in the broth mix that all together and that will be our vegetable side for this dinner and then of course we have our mashed potatoes we're adding our bacon grease to those in place of butter i've mentioned it before it's my favorite uh, way to make mashed potatoes so much good flavor there we go we've got those pork chops finishing up under the broiler in the oven they're going to be so delicious i love pork chops and this was just a wonderful meal on this day. Now feeding these to my children, I have lots of little ones who need their meat cut off the bone. So typically before I plate up food, I will cut all of the meat off of the pork chops and have it there so that the kids can just scoop some chunks of meat. And then Adam has the job of eating all of the leftover meat off the bones. He will clean those up so that nothing goes to waste. We have a couple pork chops over there for the big kids who can cut their own meat. And this is what we'll eat. Dinner is the one meal a day where Adam is home with us. So we always enjoy sitting around the table together and enjoying this time. Little Miss Hannah is too small to sit with us at the table. And so she typically sleeps through our meals. <laughs> All right, let's make some brownies for dessert on this day. We are gonna make gluten-free brownies using cassava flour. This is my favorite flour for making this particular brownie recipe. It turns out perfectly. Cassava is a gluten-free flour option if you're looking for something like that. We are going to triple this recipe on this day. Using up some more water glassed eggs and then our fat that we're using in this is olive oil. Get that all mixed up together and this is what it looks like. 
We're going to add some white chocolate chips. I buy these in bulk uh, for baking because I do have a son who likes to experiment and bake a lot. So we always need baking supplies <laughs> in bulk uh, amounts here in the house. So these are dairy-free white chocolate chips. We're going to mix that around, put it in the pan, and get that baking while I work on the rest of dinner for this evening. We are making white chicken chili. I kind of showed you the leftovers earlier, but I have two quarts of a white chicken chili base. This has our homegrown chicken and broth in it, and then it has all the spices like the cumin, the hot pepper, the chili peppers, um, onion, garlic, everything that is in my white chicken chili is canned up and ready to go. And then when I wanna make white chicken chili, all I have to do is add some beans to it. It's really convenient, another one of those easy homestead meals. And on this day, I'm just gonna add some freeze-dried scallions from the garden. That'll give it some extra onion flavor. We'll mix that around. And then once again, those vegetables just rehydrate in the broth as it will be cooking. We're also gonna add a little extra pepper because I have some on the shelves to use up. These were just green peppers from last year's garden that are kind of sliced. And so we'll add some of those freeze dried peppers in and also let them rehydrate. So we're gonna have the brownies for dessert. We're gonna have the soup as our main course. And I'm gonna make some very rustic biscuits here as a side dish. So we're gonna use up that fresh ground wheat flour that I had made earlier in the video. Remember these were soft white wheat berries that we had ground down and I didn't sift. And then we grabbed some water glassed eggs. I just wanted to show you guys how beautiful, these are my favorite eggs out of all of the eggs that my hens lay. I can't get the camera to focus, but I call these my mint chocolate chip eggs. I love the green color with the little specks, the brown specks, it's just so pretty. Makes me long for spring when we get these colorful egg baskets. I can't wait. But anyways, okay, so we're back to our unsifted flour with the bran in it. We're gonna use a home rendered lard here as our fat in our biscuits, and we'll get that all mixed up. Now these are gonna end up more like a drop biscuit texture. And as I said before, when you're using freshly ground um, grains, they typically, um, need to absorb water a little longer than pre-ground flour. They also aren't as dense, so you might need to use extra flour in your recipes. Your regular pre-ground flour recipes might not work the same. So here we are. We're going to spread out that batter mixture onto the parchment paper, and then we're just going to bake it in the oven. These are not pretty, and I know you guys, someone's going to comment and say that's the ugliest food they've ever seen, and I get it. It isn't pretty, but it gets the job done, and these are very nutritious, whole ground flour, home-rendered lard that's full of vitamin D for my kids, eggs. I mean, it's, it's a healthy food, and it's going to taste delicious dipped in the white chicken chili. So I don't care how it looks. I care that it's good for my children. And you know what? They're sitting here grabbing crumbs and eating it and asking for more. So it can't taste that terrible because I've got little ones here that I'm having to swat away and say, wait till dinner. You can have some at dinner. All right. So let's show you how this meal ended up turning out. There's what our chili looks like. And the kids will enjoy that. See what it looks like in a bowl. It's got the beans and the chicken and all the veggies. We've got our ugly, our, our rustic biscuits and our cassava flour brownies. Now those are gluten-free so that I can enjoy those. I cannot eat the biscuits because I um, gluten seems to trigger my Crohn's disease. So there we go. And then I get questions about this all the time. Do all your kids of varying ages eat the same amount? Because it looks like they all get the same amount in the bowls. And I'm just going to tell you that this is the start. I pour some of the pot into each of the bowls as a start. And then my older children go back for seconds and thirds when they finish their bowl. But this is just the way I played it up. And then kids of varying ages will eat more based on how hungry they are. There's always more in the pot for them to go back and eat. So just trying to show you what those brownies look like. Never slice your brownies when they're still hot because they sort of fall apart. Um, but it gets the job done. Another meal together, another dinner. Adam just got home. 
He's spending some time with his little baby girl. He misses us very much while he's gone during the day. And we love, oh, he's being silly. We love having him back too. So very exciting in the evenings when we all get to be together. I thought I would show you because when I cut those brownies apart when they were warm, they kind of fell apart. But the cassava flour definitely holds together well. This is once they cool, they're solid just like a regular brownie. So you can use cassava flour one-to-one -one just like a regular flour. All right, and I've shown you this before, I think in the first week's video, that I love to use peach salsa. This is home canned peach salsa. I love to use that on my pork roasts. And so I'm getting those in the crock pot and we're going to have this for dinner. But what I wanted to show you that's different in this video is how I make my potato salad out of canned potatoes. So I have two quarts of my canned potatoes here. And these are homegrown potatoes from our garden that we canned up last summer. I'm going to add to them freeze-dried celery. This is also from our garden. We'll just have to rehydrate this before we add it into our potato salad. We also have the rest of these freeze-dried scallions. And then this is some homegrown dill that we dried out. And we're going to make a potato salad out of all of this homegrown deliciousness. So canned potatoes are um, kind of different if you've never had them. They, they cook during the canning process, and, the, and they definitely have that canned flavor. My favorite way to use them is in potato salad because all of the other flavors are going to kind of mask that canned taste for me. So we've got our rehydrated celery and scallions. I'm going to drain out the excess water. We're going to pour that in. Then we're going to add some homemade mayonnaise. We're going to add some mustard. And then I have, I found a little bit of home canned sweet relish that needs used up that's in the fridge. We're going to add that for a little extra flavor. We're just going to get all of this mixed up. We'll add dill. We're going to add salt and pepper. And then I just kind of taste it and see what else it needs. And that is how I make this potato salad. If it were spring and we had extra eggs, I would definitely hard boil eggs chop those up and add it, but eggs are precious right now. We're not going to do that. There were enough eggs in the mayo. <laughs> I like to use the pepper juice from anything like this that we have sitting in the fridge. That just gives some extra vinegar and spice to it. So I don't waste that. We save that to add to whatever tuna salad, egg salad, potato salad we're making. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of paprika. And I think that's all I did on this day besides salt and pepper. So we ended up with a delicious potato salad. We have our pork roasts here that cooked up in the crock pot. And then I just had a quart of um, home canned corn. And on this wonderful day, Adam brought me home some roses. He got me one rose for each of my daughters. And I thought that was really just a nice surprise. Those were sitting there that he had brought in. So, all right, let's get dinner plated up. This is what that looks like for the children to eat. And they're very excited, always hungry by the end of the day and ready for dinner. Our final dinner I'm gonna show you is a brisket on this day. I do different marinades every time, but on this day I had a red wine and Worcestershire sauce and some liquid smoke that I just kind of mix together. I don't measure, we're just mixing that together in various quantities. And we're gonna marinate our brisket overnight in that mixture. And it definitely made a good flavor. We also poured salt and pepper or shook salt and pepper over the top of it. The next day it cooked in the oven all day on about um, 240 degrees. And then I turned it up for the last hour to uh, 350. Got it all sliced up, served it with some mashed potatoes. And then we just had some frozen mixed veggies that I heated up quickly. And this is what we ate for dinner on this day. Homegrown brisket, there's nothing like it. I much prefer it smoked, but it's winter and I wasn't going to go outside and use the smoker. There we go. We got David working on some biscotti for the weekend for breakfast. He makes amazing biscotti and someday I'll share that recipe with you. But here was our Friday night dinner. And those were our meals for this week. It's getting harder to share them with you without being redundant. So I hope you enjoyed some of these newer ideas that I had for you in this video. And we're looking forward to uh, using up more food next week. Okay, friends, and that was it for this week. 
and um, hopefully next week I'll be back with another video. I would like to, in that video, focus on snacks during the pantry challenge. What I haven't been showing you in these videos is some of the different snacks that we make, and a lot of it is as simple as the kids grabbing fresh apples. We do have uh, an overflow fridge in our garage that is just full of fresh apples, so the kids will snack on that with maybe a little sunflower seed butter, um, or I'll pop popcorn, you know, on Sunday evenings when we watch our movies together and things. But there are lots of other snacks that I just haven't been showing you. So I think I'm going to focus on snacks, beverages, and maybe desserts in next week's video. Um, all right. We have lots of empty jars that have accumulated in the last couple weeks. I've done a little bit of dried bean canning, but I really need to up my canning game here <laughs> in the next um, couple of weeks and focus on bone broth and meat and so that is a huge goal for next week i like to set goals as i've mentioned for each week just to get me to focus on um, using up certain items and so i think going through the freezer and getting out all of the bones we have beef bones we have a lot of um, chicken feet and we even have some ham bones and things that we need to turn into broth so that will be my goal and i'll take you guys along on that process in next week's video. I'm also here in a couple hours going to pick up my bulk citrus order. I mentioned this um, in the videos leading up to the pantry challenge. That that's part of my rules that I allow myself during the month of January. Um, it is a time citrus is in season and we like to eat seasonally here. We purchase in bulk the things that we can't grow like citrus here in Ohio and then we preserve it for the rest of the year. So I got um, three bushels of lemons that I will mostly be juicing and then we freeze that juice so that we can use it for various things throughout the rest of the year. Mostly we use it to make lemonade and I've shown you guys that recipe um, but that's also lemon juice that we'll use for other things. And then I got some grapefruit for fresh eating and I believe I got some mandarin oranges so that will be a nice treat and we'll be eating a lot of that in the snack video next week. Um, so preserving citrus is something that we also need to work on. And then I have a few other kitchen projects that I'll, that I'll probably add into next week's video to kind of show you the other things besides meals that are still going on <laughs> on a homestead. Um, it doesn't, food preservation doesn't stop just because the garden stopped outside. There are constantly things that need to be done. And I know I have several batches of vinegar that have been brewing since last August that I've noticed I think are ready to be bottled up and I took you guys along on that whole process last year and would like to finish that up for you. So anyways, that's enough about what's coming <laughs> in next week's video. I hope once again that you will check out the hashtag and see everybody else who is participating and yeah, we'll see you guys next week. All right, bye. Just wanna say a quick thank you to Anna for these beautiful baby gifts that you sent me. Anna looks adorable in them, so thank you so much for the time and energy that you put into these. Have a great day, friends.